Hi, so yours is Mr. Pfeiffer. We are here with Jane, and Jane is going to show us all the cool things that he learned with his challenge to make the world better with science as one of our Google Science Project finalists. We're proud of all six of our finalists. Here's Jane to tell you what he did. Hello, my name is Jane, and I'm an eighth grader here at Meade Junior High. This year, I decided to explore how did the source of mud affect the voltage in a microprocessor cell. I came across this project while seeing the energy crisis that has been that is going around the world these days. I explored what renewable energy could do and how this could help the world. I began by researching what renewable energy was and what these crises were doing for these countries. I came across a microbial fuel cell and saw how this is something I'd like to research. I found that a microbial fuel cell was a device that harvested the microbes inside of mud and harvested the energy that they created. This was a renewable energy source that that was successful in empowering small circuits. As you can see in this diagram here, an anode and a cathode harvest the energy that the microbes create and the salt bridge makes it an open circuit. This project was interesting to me as it helped me solve and work towards UN goals 7 and 13, which were affordable clean energy and climate action, two really important things in our world today. My final question was how does the location of mud affect the voltage in a microbial fuel cell? I hypothesize that the mud from a pond will have the greatest voltage. I believe this because the bacterial community inside the pond mud would be the greatest. My three independent variables that I tested was mud from the bottom of a pond, compost plus backyard mud, and backyard mud. And I was testing the amount of voltage that the circuit generated. I used numerous materials for my studies, such as cotton mesh and cotton wire for the anode and cathode, and gelatin and salt for the salt bridge. I construct, constructed my microbial fuel cell by using, um, by drilling holes into a lid for wires and creating salt bridges that allowed me to show the transfer of energy between the two compartments. Here you can see the anodes and cathodes. One problem I encountered during my study was my salt bridge was unsuccessful. Originally, I used a rope salt bridge, which is a device that allows the energy to pass between the two containers. However, this was unsuccessful, but after some more research, I came across a gelatin salt bridge, which was more successful and provided better results. As you can see in this video of my test, the water multimeter to how much voltage was flowing throughout the circuit. The alligator clips connect the multimeter to the microbial fuel cell, and the results that the multimeter showed varied based on the type. After completing my study, my results were quite interesting. The pond mud had generated the most voltage, around 0 0.52 volts, while backyard mud plus compost and backyard mud we're not far behind with 0 0.37 volts. Another variable I tested during my study was how the effect time had on the microbial fuel cells. As you, can, as you can see in this line graph below, over time, the energy generated by the microbial fuel cells went up, showing that this was a really successful and beneficial energy source to the world. I tested three different mud sources with three different contraptions. In conclusion, I found that the mud from the pond was the most successful in generating the most voltage because of the because it generated over 0.3 more volts than the next closest one. However, after doing future research, I found that the reasoning behind this was not as simple as one would think. I figured out that the reason the pond mud produced the most voltage was because of the large microbial population inside of it, further proving my study. As you can see written here, there's a large real world application of the study. If this project was to be created on a bigger and larger scale, we could replicate this and power small circuits for things such as household items, such as microwaves and hair dryers, or even big, big items like refrigerators and laundry machines. In conclusion, my study was successful in finding an alternate energy source that was renewable and easily accessible for people all around the world. I'd like to thank all these sources that I use and videos that I use in finding this 
And I would thank Mr. Pfeiffer and my parents for helping me come with, with the idea and perform and carry out my study. Thank you.